Hello everyone, and welcome to my incredibly late analysis of the upcoming Fire Emblem 3 houses. Now, I'm not gonna be like the others and fake orgasm all over this, because let's be honest with ourselves here. There really isn't much to the trailer besides some of the basics, so I'm gonna list some of my opinions and desires for this game, some of my take of what they did show us in the trailers, and we'll leave it at that. So first things first is the title, Three Houses. Now, this is one of these situations where I'm glad that instead of the Japanese name of Three Kingdoms Unrivaled, we have Dynasty Warriors as an English name. Here instead though, we just get Three Houses. I mean, couldn't they have come up with a better name? I mean, alright, okay look, the Japanese name for this game contains four major kanji letters. Fung Fa Suit Yu, also known as Wind, Flower, Snow, and Moon. Since kanji is basically stolen Chinese words, I was able to remember this being a poem about the four seasonal beauties. In its most basic form, it's an idiom talking about how spring has hundreds of flowers, autumn has the moon, summer has the cool breeze, while winter has the snow. Though it could also allude to romantic poetry. Well, that's the Chinese take of things anyway, but I'm pretty sure I'm not too far off the mark with regards to the Japanese version, since they so graciously use our words instead of their regular lang noodle language. So there's probably a hidden message there that you won't find in the English version. Anyway, point of all this is that we can probably do better than three houses, which led to another leads to another thing altogether. So I learned on Twitter that 8-4 isn't doing the localization for Three Houses, which got people worried, because that means Treehouse will be doing the localization. Apparently, they did a really banged up job with Fates. Now, I didn't play Fates, so I can't say I'm too savvy, but I do know the famous Baruka and Saizo ellipsis conversation, where they just kind of go dot 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 for a good while, and that Effie was actually a rather gentle and soft-spoken armor unit instead of this meathead that we have in English. Now I know they like their silly jokes and flanderizing characters, so perhaps Treehouse doing three houses is their idea of a joke. But anyway, let's get down to the actual trailer. So the first thing we get treated with is a world map of the continent Fodlin. Fod, that's how you pronounce it, right? F -f 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 -de -de whatever. It is split into three regions: Fergus to the north, Adrestia to the south, and Lancaster to the east. Now I can barely read these as it is, so we'll forget the smaller names on the map. Chances are they're cities or smaller houses under the control of the big three. And since I know my three kingdoms, way in the north is always the strongest, and the three houses continues this proud tradition of giving them a big chunk of land to the north separated by a long mountain range. In the center of all this is Barg May. Maybe May beca became a Barg and is now trying to uh, assimilate everybody and give them all twin tails. Resistance is futile. Or maybe it's just the kingdom above that the goddess lives to watch over the world, kinda like Kami's lookout in Dragon Ball. And then we get treated to a scene where people kick each other's asses and some important exalt person looking important, though that's not very important. What's really important, honestly, is the gameplay. And from what they've shown us, we see the basic attack, magic, combat arts, formation, equip, item, and weight. Most of them are relatively straightforward. Formation, though, is the one that I'm really interested in. So later on in the trailer, you get to see it in action, where Dimitri forms a wedge formation with his identical looking soldiers as they plow through the enemy ranks with a charge. Now I'm really hoping that it isn't something as simple as rock, paper, scissors, oh my formation's stronger than yours, because that would just kill me. Now maybe something a little more tactical like increasing mobility at the cost of combat stats, you know like, like oh you, you get to move one extra space but your, your attack and defense is lowered by like, eight, like 20%. 
Or maybe, you know, something simple, attack, increase attack, but lower defense, sort of stuff, you know, that kind of stuff would be okay. Or perhaps, you know, unlocking formation-based skills that your little squad can activate, like that charge just now. That would be cool. Now that being said, the coolest thing I find in this trailer is that you actually have a small army following you. Now I don't know how many of you played a game called Bladestorm before, but it's basically a game where you play as a mercenary captain and you can control squads of units to help you fight on the battlefield. Now each of these units under your control is their own person. They each have their own HP and will fight alongside you. Which w was really cool. They, they literally fight and die alongside with you. 1,300! Hold on that, baby. 1,400! Oh, it, come on, keep building it! 1901! Ah! Uh, and then contract fulfilled. 1900! What the fuck? Though, unfortunately, it seems like in this game, they're just backdrop to simulate a battle between two armies. They don't seem to have their own individuality, which I guess it's not too different from the way Advance Wars does it. Oh, you know, speaking of, it would be really cool if they have CO powers in this game, like an army buff or something. Though I suppose it probably wouldn't fit too well with all the regular Fire Emblem stuff already in this game, huh? Anyway, the women in the background probably Ed Edelgard, who affectionately calls you teacher, continues to blather on about the story. Something about... Some believe the crests, tokens of the goddess's power, are necessary to maintain order. But they're wrong, teacher. The crests are to blame. So from this, we get a glimpse of the story. Ooh, there are crests. You gotta go to the other two kingdoms, knock down their doors, and collect them. Then something probably happens at Bark May, and then we all get assimilated. What that? What? What that? That sounds ridiculous. Well, it's not like the trailer explained anything, you know. I mean, I do hope though that for once, that it's a story about humans using the dragons rather than the dragons using them for whatever means. I like a more human story driven by ambition and greed rather than the whole, oh man, this dude, he got possessed, now he has red eyes, and he's evil now. Okay, so this leads to the next and final thing. Characters. So we get to see Beleth, which I assume is the player character with his default name, walking around some castle and to show off the surroundings like it's some graphical achievement, which by the way, it's not. I think he's going to be an avatar. I mean, Fire Emblem has really been selling the idea of people self-inserting themselves into the game. That and Edo God only refers to you as teacher, which, well, it does make sense given his role, it's probably their way of not having to voice your stupid name. Alright, then we have Edo God. Edo God, I think that's how you pronounce it. Anyway, so when I first saw this screenshot, I thought, Wow, dude, am I playing Persona or Shin Megami Tensei here? I mean, that's not a bad thing, though, because even if it's a little different, I mean, it gives off a more mature feel. One of the reasons why I like Advanced War Days of Ruin so much is because they left behind the more childish-looking graphics of the old and go to a more serious one. And here we have Intelligent System once again trying something new with the series, I can appreciate that much. Anyway, Edo God here is waifu material. I can immediately tell. I mean, she's beautiful, she looks up to you, she listens to whatever you say. It's no surprise that one of the first things I saw on the front page of Game Fags is a topic hoping that they can bang Edo God. <laughs> it's so stupid, but I can see where they're coming from. Alright, teacher-student relationship is hot. Given the theme of the Japanese name and her talk, so, oh, don't forget me. I'm fairly certain that this is probably the case. I don't see Fire Emblem abandoning the waifu simulators anytime soon. It sells, and they know it. 
Between the other two choices, though, if this game is yet another Fire Emblem phase where you have to pick a side, I can imagine people flocking to her. I, for one, have a thing for women in aristocratic clothes. By the way, I, I also play for Team Valor, so that probably helps. That being said, I really hope that it's not going to be another Fates thing. I, I turn away from Fates when it first came out because of the whole three games bullshit. The DLCs are bad enough as it is. I would prefer that they don't Pokemon this game as well. As for the rest of the characters that appear in the trailer, you have the other two aristocrats, Dimitri and Cloud. Dimitri strikes me as someone who has a stick up their ass, and his hair reminds me of the atrocity that is Guan Yinping's hair in Dynasty Warriors 9. He is likely going to be the rival character you have to beat before gathering the rest of the crest so you can summon Exodia or something. This wouldn't be the first time for a guy named Dimitri to be a rival, like oh, how he was in GTA 4. Cloud, though, well, you know how like in Three Kingdoms there's always this odd guy out? Well, like, okay, like in Pokemon Go you have Team Instinct Spark who is rightfully mocked for his behavior. Then, well, I guess we have Sun Tren in Romance of the Three Kingdoms. I mean, Wu is kinda just there while the epic struggle of good versus evil between Shu and Wei takes place because, you know, <laughs> Shu bias and all. And now we have this dude, Cloud, who I think fits the Spark archetype. I have nothing against him, I think he's probably a fun guy to be around, but that's just my observation on the matter. Now, if they make him to be an evil dude, that would surprise me, and I would give points to Intelligent System for that. Then, we have some minor characters we know nothing about. Like Hilda, the bold wielding twin tail lolly who was no doubt assimilated by Bart May and can probably become your waifu. Then there's Mercedes, who's a car just like Celica. She'll probably also be your waifu. Then we have our goddess, and probably her representative, the, more, the important looking exalt person, who will also be your waifu. Then we have this dirty old man with a whip sword. Like, like seriously, that, that kind of stuff is usually for sexy boobasaurus monsters like Ivy, so that they can choke you like some dominatrix. To, it's something that they use, not, not some dirty old man, who will also be a waifu. But here he is, whipping people with that thing. He is no doubt an asshole. And finally, what Fire Emblem game is complete without a Manakeet lolly, who will also be your waifu? She's probably very important chilling on a throne like that. Maybe she's the descendant of a goddess, or the goddess herself. Maybe she's just Naoi, sitting on a chair. We'll probably collect crests to see her when we find out that she's manipulated by some evil dude and we must defeat her before she gives everyone twin tails and destroy the world. Well, that's pretty much my interpretation of this trailer. I, I try to keep my expectations of this game low, but I will no doubt pick up this game regardless, as long as they don't screw it up too badly. Anyway, I thank you all for watching. Until next time.